The RCN Star Network is proud to present Princeton Tigers basketball. Tonight, the Princeton Tigers go for the Ivy League championship as they play host to their arch rivals, the Pennsylvania Quakers. A pleasant good evening, everybody, and welcome to what will be a jam-packed Jadwin Gymnasium. I'm Ed Banking along with Tad Gazaneski. Well, Tad, the more things change, the more they stay the same in what was supposed to be a more balanced race in the Ivy League. Here we are with the Princeton Tigers and Penn Quakers, the only two teams alive, and the Tigers looking for their ticket tonight to the big dance. About a week ago, there were four teams that had a shot to take the Ivy this year. Again, it's down to two. It's the same old two teams. They know a lot about each other, and boy, this pregame atmosphere in here in Jadwin, Ed, is electric tonight. Well, the Tigers, again, can clinch if they win. They have a one-game lead over Pennsylvania. If the Quakers win tonight, that will force a one-game playoff at Lehigh for the NCAA berth coming up on Saturday. And Tad, the Pennsylvania Quakers have had an up and down season to say the least. They've lost a lot of people to graduation. One player who's found a new role for the Quakers will be a key factor tonight, Uganda Inikwe. Very tall young man, very athletic, one of the leading rebounders in the league. He's a force inside it. Just watching him, you can see his motivation tonight in the pregame warm-ups. A very tall Penn team too as well. That's something to keep in mind, but this is the man that makes Penn go. And he has been coming off the bench the last couple games. He will do so tonight. Well, for the Princeton Tigers, this is a team that not too many people expected to be in this situation this time of the year. One reason they are is a center who can do it all, someone who's not even a natural center, and that's Nate Walton, who's doing it offensively, defensively, you name it. He's the bread and butter of this team. The name Walton says it all. He brings a lot to the table. The only man to be a five years player for Princeton University in the history of the school. Outstanding passer, great player. When he's on the floor, this Princeton Tigers team usually comes out with a positive ending. Well, it's all on the line tonight. Either the Princeton Tigers are Ivy League champions or everybody's going to Bethlehem Saturday for the one-game playoff. Princeton and Pennsylvania are ready to go. Coming up next on the RCN Star Network with this broadcast being brought to you by www.icehockeyforkids.com. Welcome to Jadwin Gymnasium. Ed Banken here with Tad Kazaneski. Princeton and Pennsylvania set to tip off. Right now, the seniors for the Princeton Tigers are being honored before we get started with the starting lineups. Tad, Terrence Rozier Bird, CJ Chapman, and of course Nate Walton being honored. And even a player like Terrence Rozier Bird, who's been with the program, doesn't play that much, is one of the guys who contributes. And it's nice to see them get honored before their final home game. And these are the guys that do a lot in the practice set to prepare the starters as well. And it's getting a huge response here from a jam-packed Jadwin gym. And obviously a large throng of Princeton fans, as you can see by the orange. And they're honoring Nate Walton right now, Tad. And the most amazing thing about Nate Walton, we talked about all this man has done. He averages 10.6 points per game. To show you what kind of year it's been for the Tigers, he is the only Tiger right now averaging double digits in points for this basketball team. Also the fourth player in school history with two seasons of at least 100 assists. So not only can he score, does a great job of dishing the ball around, a great team player and a great leader. And there was a sign up at Brown University last weekend, the game which the Tigers won up at Brown, 64-55. Uh, the sign held up by a Brown fan that said, your father was better. Well, if you could be half as good as Bill Walton, that's not too bad. Yeah, I think you take that. Again, it's got to be a lot of pressure for that young man we just saw there a second ago because you have to live up to a Hall of Fame player who's won on every level, and I think he's done a tremendous job this season. There's a good look at him right there. It looks a lot like his dad. The color of the hair is a little different, but you know, we look at the Tigers this year, 10-3 and three in the league, 15-10 and 10 overall. Pennsylvania, a 12-16 and 16 record. They're 9-4 and four in the league. Now, as we mentioned, Penn has to win tonight the of course, a playoff Saturday at Lehigh and then win that. And there is a possibility, Tad, for those of you who don't know, there is a one-game play-in now to the NCAA tournament. They're having a field of 65. They take the two teams with the lowest RPI rating to play that first game in Dayton on Tuesday. And Tad, Pennsylvania with a losing record, ranked 216. There's a chance if they can somehow beat the Tigers twice, they may have to play one more time just to get into the NCAA tournament. And again, we have a long way to go before that. Again, the crowd's going to have a big factor. It looks like a couple of the other seniors, Walter, coming out here. But that, that's something they just added this season, Ed, and it'll be interesting to see how that all pans out. There's Nate Walton, C.J. Chapman to his right, also honored. C.J. Chapman, a player who started last year and had his role change this year, came off the bench. But, Tad, when you look at C.J. Chapman, Mike Bechtold, who didn't play much because he was hurt the first time against Penn, and Conrad Wysocki, this is a team with a better bench than we've seen in years past. And, and it's even more surprising, Ed, for the amount of players that they lost coming into this season. They've done a great job. Well, they're about to introduce the starting lineup, so let's go down to our public address announcer as first we meet the Penn Quakers. Thank you. 
senior from Audubon, New Jersey, number 51, Jeff Owen. And one of our artists, one senior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, number 21, Lamar Plummer. Uh, there you have the starting lineups being introduced, and you saw the head coaches, Fran Dumpy and John Thompson, and both teams looking forward to this one. Certainly a lot of anticipation. And, Tad, we saw those Pennsylvania starters. We noticed, as we talked about earlier, Josh Sanger starting a forward along with Coco Archibon. The center is Jeff Owens. The guard is Lamar Plummer, who struggled against the Tigers in the first meeting, and the guard at the other spot is Dave Platsky. That's the Pennsylvania lineup, and you heard the Princeton Tigers as well. Kyle Wente turned from a guard to forward this year. Logan Walton Persia and the veteran Ahmed El Nokali. Something to keep an eye out for throughout this game and is the rebounding. The first game, the Tigers out and rebounded the Quakers, and that helped lead to the victory. Penn, usually a very good rebounding team. That's going to be a huge factor in this game. Owens and Walton ready to go. Penn forces a playoff that they win. Princeton goes to the NCAA tournament and wins the Ivy League for the first time in three years that they win. Tigers in the home white, Penn in the road maroon. The tip is belong belongs to Pennsylvania as Lamar Plummer wins the tip, and the Quakers bring it up working from left to right. Klatsky watched by Ono Kali. Ahmed doing a fine job defensively against Klatsky in the first meeting. Now Owens up top, gives up the dribble and kicks it out to Plummer. Fadeaway jumper by Plummer, short no good, and Owens has the rebound along the baseline, lost it to Ed Persia, out of bounds, deflected, and the ball belongs to Pennsylvania. Well, we talked about Penn's height advantage in this game already, one offensive rebound. Princeton really going to have to work to get inside position. Now Klatsky will take it top of the key, watched by Persia. Klatsky finds some room and kicks it back outside to Archibald. Coco Archibald swinging it back to Klatsky inside to Owens. Gets a little bit of a double team as he faces the basket as when he comes over to help. Now Klatsky will work it again with 13 on the clock. In the corner it goes to Archibald. Good defense so far by the Tigers. Knocked away into the hands of Nate Walton. And the Tigers will look to bring it up and look for a slow pace for Princeton. Did a good job defensively there. Double teaming in the low post did. Tigers really controlled the tempo in the first game of the Plester, which they won 67-53. Ran down the shot clock nearly every possession. And uh, Nate Walton kicking it outside to Persia. Now the 12 seconds on the shot clock. Now Andre Logan outside, up top to Walton. Thought about three, now gives it to Persia. Just five seconds on the clock. Wente fires for three, that's good. Well, Wente got a clear look at the basket. Nobody within five feet of him. That's an outstanding offensive set for the Tigers. Kyle Wente drilled four three-pointers last Saturday for the Tigers at Brown, and now he commits the foul as he tries to pick the pocket of Jeff Owens. Shooting percentage also going to be very key. The first meeting between these two teams. Princeton only shot 39% in that game. So the first foul of the game with the Tigers leading 3-0. There it is, as you see. Wente kind of knew he had committed the foul, almost wanted to take that one back. Plummer, who was 0 for 6 from three-point land against the Tigers in their first meeting. Now they'll swing it outside to Plummer and try to work it back inside. It goes off the leg of Wente. It'll still be long to Pennsylvania. Kyle Wente 
didn't see that pass coming until it went off his leg. Good job defensively inside underneath for the Tigers, doing a lot of double teaming. 24 on the shot clock still for the Quakers. They tried to lob it into Owens. Walton doing a good job fronting him so far. Kick it outside to Plummer. Wide open. The jumper is good. A three-pointer by Lamar Plummer, and that is a good sign for the Pennsylvania Quakers. Also, both teams exchanged three-pointers early on. It looks like they want to take their time working inside. They'll take the threes if they're there. You mentioned Plummer's 0 for 6 from three-point land. The first meeting between these two, he finished 2 for 12 for the field overall. Now Nate Walton will go to work for the Tigers and feed it to Ahmed El Nokali. The junior from Pittsburgh will feed it back to Walton. Tigers with 15 on the shot clock, working it outside. Logan heading for the basket, and a bumping foul inside. This will go against Pennsylvania. It'll be Josh Sanger picking up his first personal foul. Logan, real quick first step you see here out of position, Sanger, and Sanger gets called for the foul. Got him with that right arm, and now the Tigers will inbound with a fresh 35. Top now to Ahmed El Okali. Two and a half minutes gone by, as you see in the first half. Princeton and Penn tied at three. And again, all they're looking for is that backdoor pass. There it is. Tried to get it to Nate Walton. Kyle Wenny, pump fake shooting went so well. I think he fooled Walton. It'll be Pennsylvania ball. Well, Owens was actually uh, grabbing Walton on that play. Now Plummer as he faces the double team. Gets it ahead to Archibong. Archibong runs into Persia, picks his pocket, and the Tigers take it away. Now Princeton brings it up with Eldo Kali running the show. Up top to Kyle Wente as Princeton sets up offensively. Logan outside, driving down the baseline, puts it up, no good, and the rebound comes to Owens, and here come the Quakers back the other way. Glatsky looking to run, finding some room, and now is shut down by Logan. He'll pull it back out inside, off the hands of Archibald, Princeton ball. That is the third turnover tonight for Pennsylvania. Princeton's passing has been awful tonight. Look at head coach Fran Dumphy there. They're trying to get it work on the back door. They just, the entry level passes just have not been there. Here it is again. And it was behind Archibald in that. Now Nate Walton at the top for the Tigers, hands to Elmo Kali. Ahmed will hand it back outside, and now looking to go to work as Wente. Outside Persia for three, around the rim, no good. Nobody there for the Tigers as Sanger takes the rebound away. Nobody's an understatement, and a great job of boxing out for the Penn Quakers underneath. Outside now to Klatsky. Dave Klatsky yet to put one up so far tonight. Another good three-point shooter for Pennsylvania. Owens in the paint. Looking outside, Klatsky for three, that's good! Glatsky wide open, drills the three, and the Quakers lead at 6-3. If the Quakers can continue to make their three-pointers in this game, it's going to be a big factor because they have the height advantage. It's going to make Princeton come out and play him in the three-point zone. Four minutes gone by, and the Quakers have their first lead of the game. Now Elmo Colley back over to the far side of Wente. Inside to Walton, who's double-teamed, tries to back in Owens. Contact, nothing called. A whistle and traveling called. Good defense by Owens. And the Quakers will take over with the 6-3 lead. Hey, yeah, Walton, you see here, Ed, trying to back it in, but a few too many steps. He fights for position against Owens. Well, we have a timeout on the floor. Again, the score is 6-3, Pennsylvania on top of Princeton. There you see John Thompson. Tad, there are a lot of coaches, including Glenn Miller-Brown, who are getting a lot of attention for Coach of the Year in the Ivy League. When you look at the fact that John Thompson lost Chris Young, who was supposed to be a starting center to a baseball contract, Lost, didn't lose those fans, that's for sure. Lost Ray Robbins, who took a year off. Lost Chris Krug, who took a year off. Lost Spencer Gloger, who went to UCLA. And he has his team where they are. I think there's your coach of the year right there. An amazing story, especially if they can win here tonight, take the Ivy and qualify for the tournament. A, a great story here, Ed. When you're preparing for a season, you plan for certain players. And when you miss one, let alone two, let alone five, it can make a big difference in the season. But it has an effect this Tiger team. And John Thompson has had the right approach all year. Almost as if, hey, judge us who we are, not who we could have been. He's had this team very focused, had them believing. A lot of players who have contributed People like Conrad Wysocki, Ed Persia, weren't really expected to be as much of a factor for the Tigers this year, but he had them believing. And I think the most impressive thing was, Tad, earlier in the year, this team got blown out of Duke. And I think even though they got blown out, being in that atmosphere certainly helped them going into the palestra. Well, you have to realize that's probably going to be the toughest team you're going to play the whole year in one of the toughest atmospheres to play, and you just got to use it as a building experience and move on from there. There's a lot of talk on both sides. Who would be seated where if the NCAA tournament started? A lot of people think if Princeton wins tonight, they would be about a 15th seed. 
Well, the first thing is you have to win here tonight. And I'll tell you what, give an A for effort for the fans. Ed. The fans have come up. They are loud. They are vocal. You can, you can see the paint of orange in the lower level as now we get set to go. And some stats early on. Both teams just with three attempts so far from the field. Penn two of three. Princeton one for three. Again, we mentioned the three turnovers by the Quakers, the key early on. The three-pointers, though, have been huge for Pennsylvania. They're two for two, Ed, and it's going to open things up for them if they can continue to hit the three-pointer. So the Quakers now go to work with the three-point lead. Jeff Schiffner, who's played very well off the bench for Pennsylvania in recent weeks, has checked into the game now for the Quakers. Fran Dumpy also getting some contributions from some new faces. Now we have a whistle, and we have, let's see, a five-second violation. Oh, check that, we have an offensive foul against Jeff Owens. Let's see, check that, make that Josh Sanger who picks up the foul. So Sanger picks up his second personal foul. And Sanger will go to the bench. Sanger just jockeying for position underneath. There you see him setting the screen a little bit extra. Kind of a touchy call, a break for Princeton there. Yeah, I think they called the fact that he got the leg out a little bit. That was the one thing that gave him the foul. We'll, we'll see a lot more contact that won't be called between these two in most games. Now CJ Chapman going to work for the Tigers. Outside to Logan, Chapman thought about three, now puts it on the floor and kicks it back outside. 15 on the shot clock for the Tigers. Wente outside. Logan, and rather Walton now up top. Bounce pass on the back door, layup is good by Wente. And it is so hard to play defense when your man goes behind you. You have to turn, find the ball, and find the man. That's what Princeton got there. Now it's a one-point lead as Uganda Inikwe is checked into the game for Pennsylvania. He's got the ball, he goes up strong and puts it home. Boy, already at off the bench, he gets the ball one time and scores. He is going to be a big factor in this game. Sanger on the bench with the two fouls, and the Quakers back up by three. Inikwe last year was just frightening as a freshman, and not that he hasn't played well this year, but a lot of people thought he could be the Ivy League player of the year. Still played well, but maybe not as well as a lot of people thought. Seems like he has it all. Very quick and some tallness with speed. And he also has his first personal foul, as they call him with a hand check foul inside. For this Princeton squad, or for this Pennsylvania squad, is now they're going to change the foul to Dave Klatsky. They're so used to seeing the Tigers a little more equipped to handle the back door. Walton down the right side, layup is good. Well, that just looked like Walton made up his mind as soon as he got the ball to go aggressively to the hoop and nobody could stop him. That's a good power move. Now a one point lead for Pennsylvania and Inikwe backs one off hard, no good. Strong rebound by Owens, backs it home. Owens bailed out Inikwe there. That was an awful shot coming in. Great position underneath by Owens. Jeff Owens the last two years has killed the Princeton Tigers, was the only center in the Ivy League that really could handle Chris Young and had a strong game for the Quakers last time these two teams met at the Palestra. And I think Walt with his back to the basket. Owens has one foul, so you know Walt wants to try and drive if he can and get the second personal foul on Owens. Reverse with the left hand is no good, and Inikwe has the rebound for Pennsylvania. It's a good move by Walton, trying to go right and spin to his left, just unfortunately shot a little low. Now Plummer, quick pass at the top to Inikwe. You know you got Inikwe, he's going to want to shoot every chance he gets, but he'll kick it back out to Klatsky. Now up top it goes to Schiffner, driving with a nice baseline jump, bad drive, it's no good, and the rebound comes to Nate Walton. Now the Tigers coming back the other way. Contact with Inigwe and Logan, nothing called. Now up to the left side it goes to El Nocali, bounce to Walton. He tried to get it back to Ahmed El Nocali, but it looks like we'll have a foul called inside. Or no, we'll have a kick ball as Princeton will maintain possession. They'll get a fresh 35. Here it is again, Ed. You'll see as they try to go for this backdoor pass again. There's your kick. That's a big foot too, Jeff Owens. It's got a size 15 or 16. <laughs> Now the Tigers will inbound. We'll go back up top to Conrad Wysocki, who checks into the game. 12 points and 10 rebounds versus Pennsylvania in their first meeting. Good pass inside. Layup is good by Elno Kali. That is just a big-time pass. It's really causing Penn a lot of problems defensively. Had a lot of backdoor movement. Still a one-point lead now for Pennsylvania. Archibald, who's got a little bit of a touch for a big man from the outside, as does Anikwe, who spins it back out to Owens. Good job by Owens to get the basketball back. Klatsky for three. That's good as he rattles it home. Again, not a good sign for our Princeton fans out there because, again, that's going to extend the defense out. He's two for two for three. So back to a four-point lead for Pennsylvania. 
Uh, CJ Chapman with 12.20 to go in the first half. Works it outside to Walton. Now Mike Bechtold, who didn't play much against Penn because of a foot injury in the first meeting, back now, back into the game. Now Conley outside to Bechtold with 10 on the shot clock. Walton thought about three. Now he gives up the dribble, needs some help. Five seconds on the shot clock. Outside, Elmo Kali. Three, two, one. Walton's got to put it up, and he misses the rim. It's a shot clock violation, and Pennsylvania takes over. Well, that's the risk you take when you're a ball control offense. They're looking to get a shot within the last five to ten seconds. Unfortunately, Pennsylvania stepped up their defense and caused the shot clock violation. And a timeout taken with 11.55 to go in the first half. It's Pennsylvania 13, Princeton 9, and it's had one thing that John Thompson talked about, and we touched on this earlier. He felt that Pennsylvania actually executed well as far as getting the shots they wanted offensively in the first meeting, but they just didn't fall. It's a different story tonight. And tonight, the shots are falling, especially from three. They have not missed a three-pointer as of yet. Give you another look at this here. Trying for the back door. Beautiful pass here. And laying it in is Elno Kali. And again, Ed, from a defensive standpoint, you literally have to use both your eyes, your peripheral vision, really challenged here because on a minute, a second's notice, you see a pen player cutting for the back door, and it's hard to pick up the player you're covering. We mentioned the fact that if Pennsylvania wins, there'll be a one-game playoff. The last time that happened between these two teams was 1996. During that season, Pennsylvania actually swept Princeton, but the Quakers lost games to Yale and Dartmouth. So that forced the one-game playoff, a game in which the Tigers won in overtime. Princeton then went to the NCAA tournament, and they, they won some game against some team called UCLA. I think it's a bit of a famous game. That is one of the most famous college basketball games over the last 10 years. Yeah, that's one people will remember for a long, long time. And, of course, that started the run of three straight NCAA tournament appearances for Princeton. Now, we mentioned, too, that... If Pennsylvania wins, they force the one-game playoff. Both teams will officially be crowned Ivy League champions. They'll be co-champions if Penn wins tonight. The game Saturday will strictly be for the trip to the big dance. Well, right now, the Quakers shooting at 62.5%. They're 5 for 8 from the field. More importantly, they're 3, point, three for 3 from beyond the arc. And, and again, right now, Princeton defensively will stay back. They don't want to beat inside. They'll let them attempt the three-pointers. But if you keep making the three-pointers, then you got to get out in the face and shut it down. And the Quakers are going to work offensively with 11.53, as you see, to go in the first half. Quakers have done a nice job working for some good shots. Their shot selection has been excellent so far. Now Inique there's more damage inside as he holds it outside. Glatsky watched by Chapman. Glatsky driving down the left side. Good defense by Chapman to shut him off. Plummer wanted to shoot the three and said drives for two. Crashes into Walton. Nothing call. Owens fighting for the rebound by Saki. Tie up. And possession arrow points the way to the Tigers. I don't know how that wasn't a charge there, Ed. Walton was standing right under the basket. And he was just run over without a call. You see Walton. He's on the middle of your left of your screen here. He comes over. I guess a good no call there as they play, but he really got run over and then the jump ball and Princeton ball in possession out. Pennsylvania pressing, but Elno Kali rushes it ahead and hands to Nate Walton. Tigers down by four. Now Elno Kali gets the screen as he works to the right side and will kick it back out to Wysocki. Bechtel top of the key over to Nate Walton. Walton sends one back outside to Elno Kali and now to Chapman. CJ Chapman, a good three point shooter off the bench for the Tigers. Quickly in the paint to Wysocki with five on the clock. Outside to Chapman for three. That's too strong, and the rebound comes away to Owens. Boy, Ed, Princeton shooting early on. Not that great from outside. It's going to make things tough as we get down to crunch time in this game. They started out hot at the Palestra in the first half, cooled off in the second half, but their defense held the Quakers to a poor shooting night. And Ikwe's jumper is too strong, and C.J. Chapman fights for the rebound. Out of bounds, Princeton ball. And that's really the first poor shot that Pennsylvania's taken. Well, it just seems like that's Ikwe's tendency, and he looks to shoot no matter where he gets the ball on the floor, and he's pumped up two bad ones thus far. And well, you see Jeff Owens going to the bench. Owens... Just with one personal foul, played pretty well so far in this game for Penn. We'll see if Princeton can somehow capitalize with some offensive rebounds on a miss now. Adam Chubb, who's also played well recently for the Quakers, will check in and guard Nate Walton. And the man defense for the Quakers. Now Beck told outside, will send it back out to Elmo Colley. Now to Nate Walton along the right side. Bounce pass inside, tried to get it to Elmo Colley, was taken away. And it's sent up ahead. 
Now yeah, Pennsylvania going to work as Schiffner gets it to the outside. Archibong open for three. That's a brick, and the rebound comes to Bechtel. Hey, see, real unsure of himself, Ed, when he let that go. He wanted to shoot, then hesitated, and that caused him on the follow through. Here come the Tigers now as Nate Walton has the basketball. Back up top to Chapman. Under 10 minutes to go, as you see in the first half. Isaki, hands well, no Kali. Thought about three, but Plummer came out nicely to defend him. Mokali, back up top to Bechtel, NBA three, that's good. Mike Bechtel draining it from long range, and the Tigers have cut the lead to one. Well, that was an NBA three and then some. Boy, if you can make a few of them throughout the game, that'll be big for the Tigers. Outside baseline jumper, Archibong is too strong, but a good rebound by Schiffner. Klatsky for three, that's good. And right now, Dave Klatsky's the hot man for the Quakers. Well, the sophomores made three three-pointers, nine points already in this game. I think it's time to keep an eye on them. Four-point lead for the Quakers, and Elmo Colley will come back the other way for the Tigers. Now Chapman outside. Is anyone inside the Walton? Back out to Chapman. Now Bechtel. And Swelno Colley, his turn to fire for three. That's good. But we get a whistle inside, and there was a pushing foul underneath. Now, did it come after the basket? Let's see. Basket is good, and the foul came after the shot. And I believe it'll go against C.J. Chapman. So the basket does count. We'll watch it again. Here it is from the outside. Beautiful job by Elna Colley. Now the foul was called at that point as the ball was in the air. But again, it was before the shot, so the bucket does count. Well, they're going to say the foul is against Coco Archibong, so the Tigers will keep the basketball. Van Dumphy sitting about two <laughs> feet in front of us, I should say, pacing. Definitely not in agreement with that call. Now up top it goes to Elmo Kali as the Tigers go to work with a fresh 35. Looking for the first lead since it was 3-0. Bechtel open again for three. A whistle before the shot. And this time an offensive foul against the Tigers. Looks like this will go against Andre Logan. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of fighting through the screens here that Penn's trying to do. Not sure you're getting a lot of this contact away from the ball. Now they say it'll go to Wysocki. So Conrad Wysocki picks up his first personal foul. So a one-point lead for Pennsylvania. Klatsky, who's had the hot hand, gets it to Plummer. Lamar Plummer down the baseline, kicking it outside. Now it's Chubb with the basketball. He's swinging up top, driving now a Schiffner. One-handed shot is no good, but a foul called. And it looks like it'll be a two-shot foul as Schiffner will go to the free-throw line. The pace of the game is really slowed down. We, saw, we said that Princeton wanted a slow type of ball game. I think actually Penn wants a slow type ball game too, Ed. When you have the height advantage as Penn does, you want to get in that low post offense, feed it inside. we are going to say it's a non-shooting foul now as you see Coco Archibald going out and Jeff Owens coming in. Jeff Owens is not going to get too much time on the bench tonight. Now up top it goes to an equal way. Outside, Klatsky wanted the three, now dips inside and kicks it back outside. Plummer's jumper is too strong, and Andre Logan has the rebound. Yeah. Now the Tigers go to work with a one-point deficit, 8.15 to go in the half. Back to the Wysocki with his back to the basket, hands to Andre Logan. Logan, strong move, now gives up the dribble, kicks it out for Bechtel. Hands to Wysocki now with 15 seconds on the shot clock. Now Andre Logan, right side to Wente, back up top to Logan, a whistle and a foul inside against Pennsylvania. This will go against Lamar Plummer. That'll be Plummer's first. As you're watching the game at home, a lot of the action going underneath the basket in the paint away from the ball, and that's where a lot of these fouls are piling up here. That is the fifth team foul against Pennsylvania. Just three on the Tigers as we get a timeout taken with 7.58 to go in the first half, and the Tigers trailing by one. Well, Pennsylvania Ed, has kind of trailed off a little bit on their shooting percentage. They've missed their last few times down the floor, but boy, I'll tell you, Jeff Owens is a force inside when they get the ball underneath to him. Jeff Owens, a South Jersey product, an Audubon native from Bishop Eustis High School. That's a school that, although they're rebuilding this year, traditionally one of the powers in parochial A in South Jersey. Outstanding ball club among the top 10 year in and year out in South Jersey. We got the face paint on today, Ed. I mean, the students are ready tonight here for Princeton. Jeff Owens, uh, we mentioned his impact, what he brings. He averages 9.8 points per game, but more importantly, his rebounds, averaging seven rebounds per game. And as we said, he certainly caused the Tigers trouble in recent years. Yeah, and Owens, the last time these two teams met, as we look at this again, this is this NBA three. 
from Bechtold. It's a heck of a shot. When you can drain this one, Eddie, you're doing some good shooting tons. First time that, that Penn played Princeton, Owen led Penn, had 15.7 rebounds and two block shots. Here's another aerial bomb, this time for the Tigers, or for Penn, check that. Yeah, Dave Klatsky, boy, he's been the man so far. In the first meeting between these two teams, we mentioned how Plummer struggled. Klatsky, Onikwe, and Archibong were combined four for 18, and that is the fear the Tigers had. They feel like they really had to make adjustments defensively in this game, despite the fact that the Quakers had such a low point total. And, and even that low point total is deceiving, 67-53. The Quakers had about 36 points with three minutes left to just put up a flurry of late threes. Well, well year in and year out, Ed, this Princeton defense leads the nation in points against them. Right now, they're second to Wisconsin, but defense for Princeton is the name of the game. And then the, the set, deliberate offense is what wins it for them at the end. So the Tigers will inbound, looking to take the lead. They trail by one, 16 to 15, with just under eight minutes to go in the first half. Well, no Kali outside to Andre Logan, watched by Inikwe. Bechtold now. High defense here by Pennsylvania with the man-to-man, -man. very aggressive so far. Masaki hands back out to Wendy. Thought about three, he'll kick it back out to Bechtold for three. That's good. Mike Bechtold, two for two from beyond the arc. He's feeling it now. It's a great job by Bechtold. He faked like he was going for the backdoor pass, stepped back behind the three-point line and drained it. Two-point lead for Princeton. Their first since the first minute of the game. Bank shot is no good by Shifter inside. Rebound, dunked home by Owens. Well, he's a man you have to get a body on. The tallest young man on the floor. Got a generous bounce in the easy dunk. Now we are tied at 18. And Wente will come back the other way for the Tigers. Smaller lineup out now for Princeton with Nate Walton on the bench. Bechtold, another three ball. This time it's short. Wysocki tips the rebound out. Logan and Plummer battling for it. Good job by Plummer to get the basketball. Tries to call a timeout, and he does. Great play by Lamar Plummer. And the Quakers will take the basketball after the timeout. Well, that's the kind of thing seniors do for you out there. Plummer, a senior. Great play here. See the loose ball. Gets, it, gets the kick there, just has the presence of mind to jump on it and quickly calls time with the official right there. It comes up right here. He had Schiffner right there, but as you mentioned, the senior, he did the smart thing. Looked around, didn't want to take the chance and called the timeout. Well, great tradition certainly with Pennsylvania and Princeton. As we mentioned, 31 of the last 33 years, they've won or shared the title. Well, here's the jam by Jeff Owens. You see the generous rebound here. Owens on the spot. He just gets the inside position. You're not going to stop him. And he is a force inside. The one thing he does struggle at is free throws, however, this year. He struggled from the free throw line throughout much of his career. And this year, he's just under 52%. In fact, had uh, that memorable game of the Palestra a couple seasons back where the Tigers were down 33-9 at halftime, down 29 points with 15 minutes left. They came back, won the game. Uh, really, Jeff Owens had a chance to put that game away at the free throw line, and he missed a ton down the stretch. And it's almost a hack-a-shack type deal that you deal with when you're dealing with Owens. Try and make him go to the foul line and beat you, because when he gets it inside, there's not too many on Princeton who can stop him. And the one problem Andre Logan has had this year has been very impressive in his freshman year as he does have a tendency to get into some foul trouble, but so far not the case tonight. The Tiger getting the crowd along <laughs> as they send some of the little basketballs into the crowd. I'm waiting to see the Quaker, Tad. I, I don't know if he left his mask back in Pennsylvania. Oh, he is here. He's, he's hiding in the corner. And even the mascots uh, got a lot of bad blood in this one. Well, he's the visiting mascot. He's got to keep a little low profile here tonight. So now the Quakers will inbound in an 18-18 game as you see the score with 6.57 to go on the half. Klatsky's turn now with the basketball. He's three for three from beyond the arc tonight. Watch by Elmo Colley. Plummer picking one outside to Schiffner, inside to Anikwe. Anikwe pulling it out as he gives up the dribble. Long pass outside to Klatsky with 15 on the shot clock. Up top, Anikwe's short jumper is too strong. Bounces away, and the rebound comes to Waisaki. Great job by Waisaki to get inside position there, Ed. Andre Logan back the other way for the Tigers as they look for the lead. I think if you can keep Anikwe outside, away from the basket, Ed, as Penn's, Princeton's doing right now, they'll be in good shape. Outside to Kyle Wente, driving down the baseline, gives up the dribble, sends it back up top to Logan. Now outside to Wente with 10 on the shot clock for the Tigers. 
Elmo Kali, six on the clock, into the paint, outside, long three by Wysocki, knocks it down. The Tigers are unconscious from three-point range tonight. That was NBA range plus again. And the Tigers take the lead by three. Owens, double team, back out to Anikwe, now to Schiffner. 21-18 Princeton. Owens back to the basket, kicks one back outside. Now they work it back to Klatsky. Outside to Schiffner, he's open for three. Back of the rim, no good, and the rebound comes to Kyle Wente. Defensively, Princeton doing a good job on the board, especially keeping Owens away, no second effort shots. Incidentally, Conrad Wysocki is just under 28% from beyond three-point land. Didn't look like it there. Bechtel kicking one outside for Logan. Wysocki facing Owens, will get it back to Bechtel. Back up top to Wente, right side to Ono Kali. Working down low now for Wysocki, kicks it back out to Logan. His turn for three, no good, but he's fouled. He'll go to the line for three shots. Big break for Princeton there as they get the three-pointer going long, but the foul, chance to make them from the free throw line. And Uganda Inikwe picks up his first personal foul. That is the Quakers' sixth, just three so far by the Tigers. And three shots coming up now for Andre Logan, who goes to the free throw line. Logan on the season, the 74% free throw shooter. The freshman from Brooklyn, New York. Misses his first. First free throw attempt of the night for either team. Tigers trying to stretch their lead. They lead by three. If they win, the Ivy League championship is theirs. Makes his second free throw. Now Nate Walton will check back into the game. Mike Bechtold, who certainly had a presence off the bench with two threes, will check out. Princeton has to be very, fairly fortunate. They have a four-point lead. Walton sat out a majority of that time. Logan makes his third, so two out of three for Andre Logan. And the Tigers have their largest lead of the game at 23 to 18. Biggest difference, Ed, has been no second effort shots in the offensive glass for Penn. Now Klatsky, you see the attention he's getting now as he goes beyond the arc. Plummer kicking it back outside to Schiffner along the baseline. Quickly over to Anikwe, so he'll pull it back out. Over to Schiffner, back up top. Klatsky fires for three. That's good. He got a great screen as Wente couldn't get over to him. And Dave Klatsky has 12 points on four three-pointers. Sophomore's in the zone tonight, Ed. That was actually an off-balance three, a very difficult shot. Now the Tigers' lead is cut to two as Walton will work at the top of the key. Now Wysocki back over to Logan, and the Tigers will take some time at the top of the perimeter. Right side now to Wysocki. Anyone back to Wente as he almost had it knocked away. Logan was open for three and said drives into the paint. One-hander is too short, but Nate Walton has the rebound and the Tigers set up again. It's a heads-up job by Walton to pull it up and run some more clock, get a good set offense in. Wysocki leaning back to Wente as the Tigers have a fresh 35 to work with. Nate Walton with the left hand, kicks on back outside. Wente fires for three. That's too strong. Back of the rim, Wysocki oh. fights for the rebound. Well, it looked like he might have got a shot from Shifter, but nothing called. I don't know how that's not a foul against Shifter. All but grabbed the uniform. Owen, strong move inside. Had it knocked away, and Ahmed al comes back as the Tigers look to run. Ahmed down the paint, back of the rim, no good, and a fucking foul call against the Quakers. Well, I guess it all evens out in the long run. You get a no foul one side, you get the steal, come back, get to go to the free throw line, so the Tigers will take that. That is the second foul against Klatsky. That's big. Here's the drive by Ono Kali. Attempted a block there by Klatsky. Not really good. So Ono Kali will get two free throws. That is the 17th foul from the Quakers, so the Tigers will be shooting the rest of the way here in this first half with 3.37 to go. Elmo Kali makes his first free throw. He's 83% at the line, and one thing the Tigers have really improved on this year are their foul shots. So we get a 30-second timeout for Princeton. So the Tigers, as we look at it again, now lead by three. There's the foul. I mean, you can see he's got his left arm all over. Some, one of the three officials, they missed that one. Well, it all, it all happens to even out usually between these two teams, so I'm sure it, it'll work the other way before the night is over. We talked a lot about John Thompson there, but 
Let's not forget Fran Dunphy. Considering this team really had to rebuild a lot this year, and they had a murderous schedule, which is part of the reason why they're 12 and 16. You want to talk about another great coach in the Ivy League, Fran Dunphy has really built an institution of Pennsylvania. Year in and year out, Ed, always at the top of his game, and they're doing a great job. And a lot of their players of their team, Ed, are underclassmen that we're looking at, with the exception of uh, Jeff Owens, a senior, and Sanger, a starter, is a senior. Everybody else, pretty much sophomores, juniors. And much like Princeton, Dumphy knew that a lot of his younger players would have to step up. But from one other thing that we've heard, it seems like the Tigers have a much stronger recruiting class coming in for next year. Romo Colley will try to make it two for two at the line. And he misses it short, but Wysocki puts the rebound home. And that's just sheer effort, fighting past the man in front of you, out jumping him and getting the basket. Five point lead for the Tigers as the Jadwin faithful continue to make noise. And outside to Archibald, giving it the dribble, gets it back to Anikwe who lost the ball for a second. Good defense by Wysocki, gets through some traffic, trying to feed it inside to Archibald, rejected inside by Logan. Great team defense again for the Tigers. This time Logan swatted away. And we have a timeout taken by the Quakers with 3.11 to go in the first half. Princeton leading by five. You can see Logan's over there. Walton's in there to help. That's easy pickings there for Logan. Yeah, Archibong underneath. He made the move to get by Wysocki, but made one little fake too many. Tried to get too cute. But again, you see the help defense. Ed, look at all the white shirts in your screen that make this a tough play. Nice swat there, that's clean ball. So the Tigers lead by five. There is Andre Logan, we talked about him, the freshman. And he's another guy who, and you could go down the list with people like Conrad Wysocki who stepped in as a freshman, has played well. Mike Bechtold who didn't play as much last year is playing more now. The same with people like Kyle Wenny. They've needed everyone to step up and they've done just that. And again, it's great team basketball. This is an outstanding defensive effort as well as offensive effort. And one thing that John Thompson has done a little more than Bill Carmody and Pete Carrill did here, he'll rotate his players a little more. You usually would see six, maybe seven players when the Tigers got down into their set rotation late in the season in the Ivy League under Carmody and Carrill. Not the case here. You see a lot of substituting with Chapman, Bechtold, and Wysocki interchanging with the starters. And that can make things tough on the defense for the opposing team because when you have a go-to guy, a lot of times you can focus on that player. Here, you have six, seven, eight players who can beat you. Stats kind of evening out, Ed, as we look at this both teams' shooting percentage dropping slightly. Ted, I'm glad to see your brother is here tonight. <laughs> Tell you what, the, the crowd of the students here, look at the little pyramid action going on. They, they are into this game. Well, put it this way, if Princeton is able to win, I think you'll see a lot of those people heading to the floor, but the Tigers aren't thinking about that right now. 50, almost 53% of the field are the Princeton Tigers here in this first half. Five for 10 from beyond the arc. Now the Quakers look to inbound, having trouble getting it in, and another timeout taken. Plummer had to take the timeout. Nobody was open. Good defense by the Tigers again. Just looks like Penn can't get in any sync offensively right now. They're trying to get a game plan going. Offensively, though, Princeton doing a good job shutting them down. Well, as we mentioned, uh, a lot of birds for the big dance already gone. Some of the smaller conferences already having their winners. In fact, the about five more will be decided tonight, but a lot of the smaller conferences getting in, and a lot of the big tournaments now beginning to start this week. You see head coach Fran Dunphy, Penn. Again, in order for them to qualify for the NCAAs, Ed, they have a, their work cut out, and they have to win tonight to force a playoff. Win that game Saturday, and as you mentioned, Ed, they may have to play another game besides that to get into the tournament. You saw Fran Dunphy, a 206-121 record at Pennsylvania, and a lot of those losses coming to, like with Princeton, teams in the top 20 who the Quakers will play to get better. A plumber in the corner, watched by Chapman with eight on the shot clock. Back outside it goes to Schiffner. Fade away, jumper off the heel of the rim, no good. Tipped up, Wysocki had it, lost it, and the rebound comes outside to Nate Walton. Well, you can see when that ball goes up in the air, Penn can really sky. That's why Princeton has to work to get inside position. They got it there. Now Wysocki will get it back outside to Elmo Colley. Now the Tigers slowing it down again with 2.40 to go in the half. Quickly inside to Wysocki. 
Outside to Chapman, thought about a long three, now a shorter three, ball is good! C.J. Chapman with his first three of the night, and the Tigers have 14 points for their bench tonight. That was an amazing job of using the head fake. Hake the, hit, fake the man right out of his shoes, stepped up for an easy three. The Tigers are six for 11 from beyond the arc. Inikwe, running hook is good and a foul. Beautiful shot by Uganda and Nick Wayne. He'll try for the three-point play. Well, that was an NBA-type move there, Ed. You see him starting at the foul line with the left hand. Foul as he goes up by Walton right there. Let's go to the shot. That's a nice foul. They called the foul, even though it didn't quite look like one. Didn't see a lot of contact there, but Nick Wayne will go to the free throw line. He's got four points on the night. And on the year, he is a 58.5% free throw shooter. But he makes the free throw. Big three-point play by Onikwe. Now it's a five-point lead for the Tigers. A little bit of a press here by Pennsylvania. The Tigers all year have done a pretty nice job, with the exception of playing Duke, which is excusable of breaking the press. Uh, Logan will pull it back out tonight. Walton, the Tigers go to work once again as we near the two-minute mark of the first half. Uh, Chapman outside. Thought about the three, but the Quakers came out to defend. Wing it goes now to Walton with 10 on the shot clock. Driving down the baseline, needs help as he gives up the dribble. Somebody's got to come over for the Tigers. Just gets it inside. Well, no, Collie rejected inside. Comes out to Walton, he didn't beat the buzzer. Shot clock violation as Coco Archibald got the block and the Quakers will take over. There's a great set of defense there by Penn. Got a double team in the corner, kick it out just before the shot clock. You see it here, trying to get it inside on the Collie. Great rejection there, and when Walton picks up the ball, he had one second on the clock, and that's why you get the violation. And it was the correct call. We saw the clock hit zero before it left Walton's hands. Now Archibald down the baseline outside to Klatsky. Back up top to Anikwe. Jumper around the rim, no good, and a strong rebound by Nate Walton. If there's any weak part of Anikwe's game, Ed, it's his outside jumper. He does not shoot the ball well. And he was hitting that more consistently last year, not the case this year. Wysakio hand to Elmo Kali. Outside again to Walton. Good pass inside to Wysaki. lays it home. Conrad Wysaki with seven points off the bench. He's killing the Quakers again. When you overcommit on defense, Ed, it burns you. Air ball by Plummer as he forced that shot. Actually going for a two for one there. That's why he put up the quick shot, but now the Tigers will take it. Now Elmo Kali's turn. Ahmed down the paint, one-hander around the rim, no good. Rebound comes outside to Klatsky, and now the Quakers with about a one-second game clock, shot clock differential will go to work. That's just bad luck for Elmo Kali. A nice drive to the hoop, just slightly too hard off the glass. Look for the Quakers now to basically hold for one. They have to get it up before the half is over. 20 on the shot clock, now 20 on the game clock. Klatsky watched by Elmo Kali. Nine on the shot clock. Five on the shot clock. Up top, Anikwe. Good pump fake, short jumper is good. 3.3 left in the half. Tigers rush it up. Elmo Kali from half court, no good. And that will do it for the first half. The Princeton Tigers are one half away from the Ivy League championship. They lead the Pennsylvania Quakers by a score of 31 to 26. A great defensive effort there for Penn and, and Princeton in, both, in the first half. Both teams did a nice job there. I think just Princeton had a little bit tougher off that offensive and defensive glass. So the Jadwin faithful enjoying what they've seen. After one half of play, it's Princeton 31, Pennsylvania 36. Stay tuned now for our headlines, local edition, as we step away for our halftime festivities and come back for second half action on the RCN Star Network. Welcome back to Jadwin Gymnasium. Ed Banken here with Tad Kazaneski. One half complete, and the Princeton Tigers lead the Pennsylvania Quakers by a score of 31 to 26. Well, Tad, the Quakers did what they wanted to do to start the first half. That's make shots, which they didn't do against the Tigers the first time as we 
Check the first half stats. Well, there you see the score, 31-26. Uh, Princeton leads it here. But everything else, as you go pretty much straight through, all the stats about even. Turnovers about the same. Three-pointers made about the same. The, the big key stat for me is that last line right now if you're a Princeton fan. Rebounding. I thought rebounding was going to be a big factor for Penn tonight. But we're dead even in total rebounds at 13. So to me right now, that's the difference in the game because you knew what kind of shot percentage Princeton could bring in. But if they could hang with the rebound game, which they've done, they have a great chance to win. That was the big difference at the Palestra, the fact that the Tigers did more than hang in. They out-rebounded the Quakers, which is something that nobody expected. I don't even think John Thompson expected that they would out-rebound the Quakers. I think he just wanted them to hold their own like they're doing tonight. And you see the even stats right there with the rebound. Well, a lot of it is just fighting for inside position. You have to get in between your man and the basket. And if you get good inside position, you're either going to get the ball or you're going to get fouled. And a lot of times you get some good bounces as well. As you see the Quakers warming up and a very balanced scoring attack for Princeton in that first half. And what was most impressive is their bench play. The Tigers got 16 points from their bench. 16 for the bench. I don't believe Penn has any off their bench, Ed, coming in. And a majority of their points in that first half came from Klatsky. And Ikwe had a decent job as well. He had seven in the first half. but Te Technically, he's off the bench, but you kind of consider yeah. him a starter. So as we take a look at some of the leading scorers in that first half, again, it's a case where the Tigers were a little more balanced in that first half. Let's take a look at some of the Tigers' work offensively in the first half. You see Walton, who did a great job in the first half to Wysocki. Wysocki with a nice lay-in here. You've gotten a lot of easy baskets like that for Princeton tonight. They're getting easy lay-ins. So when you think about it, 16 points off the bench for the Tigers. They have 31 points tonight, so the bench has accounted for more than half of their points. <laughs> Crowd really getting into that down the other end. This is Penn on the shot. And you get the high rebound again. Trying to tip it in there is Penn. And then the loose ball situation. Again, they're doing, you can see three white shirts, though, Ed, right underneath in the area of the ball. And a nice save there. And one of the Quakers on a pregame preview actually admitted that they were outworked by Princeton and that the Tigers were a little more ready to play the Quakers than Pennsylvania was. That's a little surprising when you consider there were a lot of Tigers who weren't used to playing in the Palestra. And let's face it, the first time you go on the Palestra, it can be intimidating. In fact, Brian Earl, who had such a great career with the Tigers, his first game in the Palestra, frankly, he was terrible. And of course, he turned out to be one of the big Palestra killers as he matured as a player. You're so close to the action there, Ed, and it gets ungodly loud in that building. I mean, it's very loud here tonight. But for some reason, the palestra just reverberates the sound, and it gets really loud. It never seems like there's only 8,000 people in there. It seems like there's 80,000 every time you go in there. You can really sense a festive atmosphere, though, Ed, as you walk around here uh, at halftime, just seeing the people. I mean, they can sense that this is a, a chance to come with a big win. Well, it is almost a party atmosphere, and, and the, the Tiger fans, as you see many of them dressed letter-wise as well, and they came for a party, and... For the Princeton Tigers who have been with this program the last two years, people who are juniors, people like Ahmed al Nokali, they haven't tasted the NCAA tournament yet. Kyle Wente's a sophomore, of course, Logan Purr's a freshman. In the last two years, it's flown to Pennsylvania, and, and even the seniors, C.J. Chapman and Nate Walton, were just small role players the one year they experienced the tournament. Well, you, you go in now the second half with a five-point lead. If you can just stay solid and no major breakdowns, you know, you know you're going to be in it down at the wire. You see the band striking it up here, and yeah, the Tigers, I think, had to be very happy considering the shots that the Quakers were able to get off. And leading the way for Pennsylvania, Tad, Dave Klatsky, four for four from three-point land, but I think what was impressive is the Tigers found a way to, to get a little more traffic in front of them as the half went on. And inside game, they've done a good job rebounding. And keep in mind, Klatsky has been this big. He has 12 of 26 points for Payne, so you really got to keep an eye on Klatsky. Wysocki with seven leads the Tigers off the bench. Bechtold with six. Elno Kali with six. Wente with five. Three points for Chapman. Logan and Walton each with two, but, but Tad, one thing about Nate Walton, what makes him such a great player is he can be just as effective player on the floor without even scoring that much. He sees what the defense gives him. If they double team him, overplay him, he knows he can pass the ball. He's a very good passer. If he gets the back door, goes into the layup. He, he's as good on the floor as he is mentally off the floor. And Dumphy looking on. Interesting to see what X's and O's he drew up in the locker room at halftime as the Quakers going against John Thompson's squad. will get the ball first to start the second half as Jeff Schiffner starts the second half. So. 
Bit of a smaller lineup, although Owens is still in there along with Chubb. With Sanger on the bench, bit of a smaller lineup as the Quakers look to get a bit more from the perimeter. Uh, Platsky. They're working inside. To Owens pass taken away by Walton. That's just a smart play by Walton. He saw it coming, stepped right in, and took it away. You almost, as a guard, have to realize if you hesitate just for one second passing in the paint with Nate Walton, it's going to be a turnover. Now, C.J. Chapman going to work for the Tigers as he gets it to Walton, and now to Waisaki, who starts the second half. I don't know, Collie with a high defense outside the perimeter by Pennsylvania. Waisaki backing in his man as the Tigers swinging around. Down low it goes to Walton, one-handed shot, too short this time, and the rebound comes to Pennsylvania. Looked like his dad there on that move, coming in to get sky hook. Now, Nikwe driving against Wente, stripped by Wente, and a beautiful defensive play, and a foul called against a frustrated Uganda Nikwe. Well, Nikwe, Ed, holds nothing back. He looks to score every time he touches the ball. Just a great defensive play there, and then a frustration foul. He picks up his second personal foul. That's the first team foul in the second half. See the drive here. Wenny just reaches in, steals it away right there. And a frustration foul by Nikwe, and now Princeton goes to work. Nate Walton outside. No points yet with a minute going by in the second half. Still a five-point lead for the Tigers. Quick pass inside to Wysocki, backs in his man, pump fake, one-handers, no good, and the rebound comes away to Chubb. Shame, that's a nice good move by Wysocki, fake right, went left, got a good look at it, just hit a little short off the glass. Now it's Glatsky's turn, down low to Owens, backing in Walton, thought about the hook, instead he'll kick it back outside. Owens oh, facing a lot of traffic, even at the top of the paint, he'll try to back in his man, instead hooks it out to Anikwe. Glatsky. Takes the return feed, knocked away. Oh, Locali takes it for the Tigers. Quickly up ahead to Chapman against Inikwe. No good, but a foul called as Uganda Inikwe has picked up his third personal foul. Great job defensively. That's our first fast break attempt at a bucket here. You see reaching in, a good defensive play there to knock it down. Then they just fight for the loose ball and a beautiful pass by Al Nakali. And then as they get it up the floor here, it's a great job of using the body by Chapman. You see how Chapman uses his body to guard off the man to try to get a shot off. The Tigers' defense telling the story so far. As Chapman misses the first feet there. We talked all about how well the Tigers are shooting for the line this year and at the top of the Ivy League, but struggling a bit tonight. They're right now three for six from the free throw line. C.J. Chapman, another player who's Again, only been in the NCAA tournament once as a reserve a couple years ago, the senior from Colorado. Now Mike Bechtel coming right back in, so... Tigers have the sharpshooters out once again. Chapman misses his second free throw, and the rebound comes to Schiffner. So still no points in the second half with two minutes gone by. Klatsky going to work and gets it outside to Plummer, who's been quiet since hitting his first shot. Owens powering down the paint, he's fouled. This will be a foul before the shot, as they'll catch Mike Bechtold with his foul. I think that's what you have to do, though, when Owens gets the ball in. You have to try and get on him early right here. Foul him. Do not let him get inside, because once he gets in the blocks, he's tough to stop. Now Klatsky is double teamed, will kick it back outside to Plummer as he hears the salute from the Princeton fans. In the paint it goes, one-handed shot, no good. Rebound comes back to Schiffner, kicks it back outside. Plummer for three, that's good. Big bucket for Lamar Plummer, he now has six. Unfortunate break for Princeton there on the wild rebound. Good kick out there to hit the three. Now it's a two-point lead for the Tigers. They've led as much as seven in this game. Pennsylvania led throughout the first 10 minutes before the Tigers went ahead. Walt with this back to the basket, going against Owens. And Chapman back outside to Bechtold, up top to Nate Walton. Back to Bechtold for three. Air ball as he had the screen, but he missed the shot. And Schiffner coming back the other way for the Quakers. He'll pull it out, and Pennsylvania will set up looking to tie or take the lead with a three. I think this is where Owens has to get himself involved in the offense, Ed. Right now he's standing right at the free throw line. Instead, Klatsky will dribble into a mess of trouble and will send it back outside. Shifter, beautiful move. He lays it in and we're tied. Nice offensive spin there. It sucked the entire defense in. An easy lay-in. Now the Tigers will try to break the 31-31 deadlock as Elno Kali has the basketball. 
5-0 run for Pennsylvania to start the second half. Bechtold driving down the paint. Tough shot, no good, but a foul called. Boy, Bechtold almost got a spectacular three-point attempt out of that. And they'll catch the foul on Jeff Owens. Great job of using his body again, though. You put your body in between the basket and the man. You see it here, it comes in on the drive. And he almost gets this in. Great effort. Owens picks up his first personal foul. That's the team's third as Mike Bechtold will go to the free throw line. Shooting into a front of Penn fans, and he misses his first free throw. So Bechtold, who normally is pretty reliable at the line, an 80% free throw shooter misses his first. There's a team here in the second half, they're 0 for 3. And he gives the Tigers the lead with the second. 32-31, Princeton. Tigers are Ivy League champions outright, and they go to the NCAA tournament if they win tonight. A pen win forces a one-game playoff between the two teams Saturday at Lehigh. They work it outside. Schiffner driving down the baseline, but Walton cut him off beautifully. Plummer getting one to Owens. Short jumper is too strong, and Mike Bechtel has the rebound. Princeton will take that all day at a 10-footer fadeaway. I'm really surprised they're not working. They're trying to get it inside, but Princeton's taking it away. Uh, and you're right. Every time they try, Nate Walton has knocked the basketball away, so I think that's part of the reason why Owens has got it outside. And Nate Walton hits the three from beyond the arc, and the Tigers are back up by four. Now that's the advantage to his game as an inside man. He can extend it out the floor and drain the three. That's his 23 of the year. He couldn't come close to hitting a three his freshman year, but boy, as he developed a shot, and this year has become a dangerous threat from beyond the arc. Now outside it goes to Chubb. And Chubb will get it back outside to Klatsky with 13 on the shot clock for the Quakers. Batsky facing a double team, loops it to Plummer, who's open for three. Got it. Lamar Plummer heating up. He has two trays in the second half. Well, Klatsky was hot with the threes. Now Plummer hot in the second half with the threes. Walton kicks it back outside. Logan's turn for three. That's good. It's turned into a tennis match. Our three for your three. Six different Tigers have hit threes tonight. And Princeton is back up by four. Plummer's turn, again he's open, but this time he misses. It's batted back out to Klatsky. Schiffner thought about getting into the three-point party, but instead he'll kick it back out. Owens, with two, three white jerseys around him as Ooh. soon as he gets the ball, but a reach-in foul against Mike Bechtel. Bechtel tried to come in and pick his pocket, but called for the foul. And we have a timeout taken with 14.35 to go in the second half. John Thompson's squad leading Fran Dumpy's squad by a score of 38 to 34. Well, yeah, you can just sense this game is coming down to the last minute of this one. Both, both teams starting to get a better flow of this game in the second half. And it's funny you mentioned about it coming down to the last second because with all the hype these games have every year, and we talk about how nine out of the last ten years there's been sweeps, with all the hype going into these games, and even with the Classic at the Plester a couple years ago, recently it seems like the winning team has won rather convincingly. And a lot of times that comes down near the end when you get involved with foul shots. If you can make your foul shots, that can, can extend the lead to the end. Here's another look here as Princeton on the offensive attack. Looks like Walton here for the three. And again, Ed, that can really help your team when you're, one of your inside players can extend the floor like that, hit an outside shot. That'll help them in the inside game. Here's another look at a three, this time Andre Logan. You can see they're not a defensive player within five feet of them. And these college players, that if you give them a good look like that, they're going to drain it. Well, how about these totals tonight? Princeton, 8 for 14 from beyond the arc. Pennsylvania, not bad in their own right, 7 for 13. Both teams shooting well. I don't think no nervousness setting in for either team. And <laughs> crowd, <laughs> this crowd is really into it tonight. Everybody's got the orange and black in the Princeton section, certainly. And there you <laughs> that, go. That, that's a unique way to, to show the Tiger spirit. The creativity abounds here from Jadwin tonight. Always had the uh, taunting of the fans. Uh, the chants always get interesting and sometimes unerrable, actually. What well, is funny, it, it's, this is the way it is in every arena, that the Penn fans, for the most part, in the top corner of the arena to our left, they're trying to make noise, but it's just not that effective up there. 
Same thing when the, the Tiger fans come to the Palestra. It's amazing. You see a whole arena full of blue and red, and you see just one little sliver of orange in one section all the way up in the top corner behind the Tigers bench. There are the Penn fans. Up with the band, the very top of the arena. Now Shifter with a good move inside, but Bechtold stripped him, and Walton picked up the ball. That's about the third time in this game one of the guards has been able to do that. There's a lot of talk about Princeton hitting their threes, but the Tigers, really, if they hold on to win, they're doing it with defense. Wente up top to Wysocki, back outside to Bechtel. They work it back inside to Wente. Good move, but he lost his handle on the basketball, and he was fouled. They call a foul on Lamar Plummer, and Fran Dumpy is not happy. The strange-looking play inside. To be Klatsky picks up his third as he coached Dumpy there. They got the low post play they won. You see it here. A nice spin move. He just almost tripped over the feet. You can almost call that a travel, as odd as that looked at. Well, the Tigers will take it with a fresh 35. Now it's Bechtold for three again. This time he misses. Ooh. And a couple of players go down. We'll have a loose ball foul called, I believe, against Nate Walton. I think this is for Wysocki, and he came from behind, knocked about four players there. You see Wysocki's on the right side of your screen, number 34. He just runs over Chubb there, and that's who he draws the foul. Looked like he picked up the spare there. Jeez. Took his own man down. Uganda and Ekwe will check back in for the Quakers as Adam Chubb will exit the game, so Wysocki picks up his second. Nobody on the Tigers in foul trouble. They each have... Two personal fouls to Bechtold and Wysocki, but that's it. And Klatsky with an open three misses, and Nate Walton outfights the Quakers for the rebound. Bechtold layup is no good. Wysocki, a spectacular shot. It will not fall, but a foul call. It's a great job by Walton to grab the rebound, look up the floor. Wide open there for the layup. You see here, Walton's going to pick up the rebound. He instantly takes his time, looks and sees he has someone open down the floor. Great pass here, and great presence of mind. It's going to be a tough basket to make as Bechtold goes in by one man. You can see the other man coming, almost put it in. And that foul came, as you see, on Bechtold. That's why he's at the free throw line. So the shot by Wysocki wouldn't have counted. Bechtold makes his first. He's now two or three from the free throw line. Bechtold, another player who had to battle through injuries a bit this year, as did Nate Walton, the junior from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Makes both free throws. So now the Tigers stretch their lead again. They're back up by six. Their largest lead of the game has been seven. This is a crucial point in the game for Penn because Princeton's defense is really solidifying underneath. Now it's an Equay's turn. Lobs one inside. Walton again knocks it away to Alno Colley. That's been the difference in the game. They can't get the ball into the low post. Doing a great job of denying that pass. Back to up top to Nate Walton. Outside to Wysocki, hands to Elmo Kali. Ahmed a long three. That's too strong, no good, and it goes out of bounds. Ball will belong to the Quakers, and John Thompson with a look on his face like he didn't like that shot. Yeah, well, you have a lead with six points. You want to run some clock, get a good set there. But again, a lot of three-pointers being shot by both teams here in the second half. He did have a good look at it. Pennsylvania will try to cut into the Tigers' lead. Side it goes to Plummer. Hounded by Bechtel, will get it inside to Chubb. Back outside, Klatsky, a tough three, no good, but a foul call against Bechtel. And I believe this will be a three-shot foul. I yes, it will. I believe this is a three-point attempt, Ed. Yes, he is going to get three, three foul shots here. And you can see Bechtel doesn't like the call. We'll get another look at it here. Yep, got the hand. You can clearly see it there on the follow-through, clearly, almost like the old high five. Well, Klatsky is shooting into a mass of orange balloons. And he calmly swishes his first free throw. Klatsky, pretty good shooter overall, and that goes to the free throw line, too. He's 75%. And he makes a second. You see what he's shooting into there. That's a great shot. You really have to concentrate, Ed. C.J. Chapman back in as Mike Bechtel will come out. Klatsky has 14 points, looking for number 15. And he knocks it down. So that cuts the Tigers' lead in half. It's 40 to 37. Quakers, the two-time Ivy League champions, trying to keep their hopes alive for a third. And they walk across the timeline. Wysocki back outside to Alokali, and now he'll pull it out as the Tigers will work some clock. Chapman, inside to Wente, up top to Alokali. 
Osaki. New traffic will hand it back to Walton. Outside to CJ Chapman with eight on the shot clock. Up top to Wysocki. Kicks it back out to Walton. Four seconds on the shot clock. Walton puts up a three. That's too strong. And the Quakers get the rebound. Almost a steal by Wente, but Plummer will bring it up for the Quakers who look to run. Outside it goes to Schiffner. Now he'll pull it out. It's the second time in the game that Princeton had to rush a shot. Got off a bad shot as the shot clock neared Andy. Now Plummer's turn. And top it goes to Archibong. Kicks it back outside to Schiffner. Good defense by Wendy to keep him getting to the basket. Ten on the shot clock for the Quakers. Nate Walton with another steal for the Tigers, but C.J. Chapman loses it. The ball belongs to the Quakers. It's a bad break for Princeton. It did go off of Chapman. Looks like Princeton's going to need a timeout to resettle here, but a bad break there. Give you another look at this again. This is a great effort by Walton. Walton Ed has done a great job in the low post denying the pass. And there's no, well, now he grabs a jersey. That could have been a foul there as he got a handful of jersey. But it did go off the hands of Chapman. That's what John Thompson has been arguing about is he sees his team now leading by three. And we'll watch it again down low as we watch the Quakers go to work. You can see on the deny, does a great job, anticipates the pass, uses his left hand. And now he'll see if he get a jersey here. There's the hand reaching in with the hand of the jersey. Well, the amazing thing about these two teams, we talked about their power in the Ivy League. 13 in a row, they've won or shared it. 31 of the last 33 years. It does usually seem to go in spurts. The Quakers had that long run in the early 90s, in the mid-90s, rather, after Princeton had the long run with the team that almost upset Georgetown in the NCAAs. The Quakers had the great teams with Matt Maloney and some other players like Ira Bowman who kept their Ivy League title run going for a long stretch. Then the Tigers broke that in 96. They got a share of the title, won the playoff. They went on a three-year run. Now it's the Quakers' turn for two years, and a lot of people thought it was going to be three until the Tigers stepped up this year. Well, what makes this game interesting, you don't have a, quote, superstar in this game, and there's a lot of very good players, and that's what makes it for a very interesting matchup. Jesus, they're slingshotting <laughs> something into the upper deck here. T-shirts. Notice they're, they're not aiming towards the Pennsylvania section. They seem to be going off to the right a little bit. They're hitting the top five rows of the upper deck here. Well, Nate Walton, they have him down as three steals tonight. Seems like he has a lot more. There's your pen, Quaker. Not getting much response from the crowd here. Uh, there, there's a little tension going right now as we see the Tigers. Fans have been a little happier so far, but... As we said, there haven't been too many nail biters with the exception of that Palestra game and the playoff game in recent years between these two teams, but could have one tonight. And the Quakers will get the basketball. A three-pointer can tie this one up at 11.40 to go in this second half. And again, Ed, look for Owens here. Owens just has not been in the flow of this game, and credit that to Walton with denying him the ball. Schiffner gets a screen off Elno Colley and puts up the three. It's no good, and Nate Walton has another rebound. Walton has been strong on the boards tonight as well. That's his fifth board. Now the Tigers go to work, and once again, they try to settle the pace down a bit here. Elno Colley with Walton now is back to the basket against Owens. Beautiful pass layup is good by Logan. All I can say on that one is, wow, that's a beautiful play. Logan, beautiful cut to the basket, easy bucket. Yet another inside look at the hoop for Princeton. Back to a five-point lead for the Tigers. Here's Klatsky. He's been had the hot hand tonight for Pennsylvania. Owens driving against Walton, kicks it back out to Klatsky as he gets it back into Owens. Pump fakes a couple of times, partially Ooh. blocked, but a foul call against Nate Walton. Well, once again, every time Jeff Owens gets the ball, there's a convention of white jerseys around him, but this time Walton picks up the foul. Walton's leading the defensive charge, and right now the way this game sits, he would be my MVP of the game. And defensively, he is all but shut down Owens. You can see Owens much taller here, using his body. Walton does a good job to hold the position and just gets enough right here to call the foul. Well, we mentioned Owens struggles at the free throw line. Just a 52% shooter coming in. And he can't get the roll on the first one. Owens 0 for 1 tonight from the free throw line as Uganda Nikwe is waiting to check in. Quakers have hung in there. They've kept it close, but eventually they've got to get on a run here. The Tigers keep answering. Second free throw is no good, but it comes back out to Klatsky. Quickly outside, Archibong for three. That's 
no good, and Nate Walton has another rebound. Rebounding's the key. We talked about it to the pregame. We talked about it at halftime. Princeton doing a good job in the defensive glass. Tigers continue to lead. Backdoor pass, another beauty from Walton to Logan for two. I think Penn's going to need a timeout here, Ed, if they don't score. This game's starting to get a little bit out of hand. You can sense the momentum going to the Tigers. Approaching the 10-minute mark, and the Tigers match their largest lead at seven. Latsky, short jumper outside by Chubb is no good, and another rebound for Nate Walton. Well, this is where Princeton's going to want to run a little clock, look for the back door. They've got in the last two times down the floor. Walton will get it back outside to Elmo Colley. Hands to Logan. As Tad mentioned, you can feel the momentum starting to go Princeton's way as they try to stretch their lead. And a beautiful layup by when he does just that. You're going to see a timeout here coming for Penn. They need a timeout. This crowd is going nuts, Ed. They're on their feet here at Jadwin with 9.35 to go, and the Tigers leading by nine. It's been classic Princeton basketball, Ed. The backdoor passes the last time down the hoop. A drive right down the middle in the heart of the defense for the easy layup. Here it is again. You see Wenny here. Beautiful move to the hoop. Off-balance effort. But again, I think it's been that kind of night. It was an off-balance shot, and it finds the bottom of the net. Here's another pass, top of the key. See Walton looking, there's your cut. Beautiful job in the lay-in as the floor begins to rock. Beautiful basket, Ed. And that play has worked twice in a row for the Tigers. Let's well, watch let's, another one for give the me another Tigers. look. This is yet another backdoor pass. This isn't the same play. This is a reverse layup this time by Logan. Well, we I, mentioned how Nate Walton can affect the game without scoring a lot of points. He has five points. But he has six assists. He has seven rebounds on the night for the Tigers. He's done it all. Again, to me, Ed, the thing you won't see in the box score defensively, how he's playing Jeff Owens. And four steals tonight, too, for Nate Walton. Archibong, one-handed jumper, does not fall. Rebound tipped up by Owens. No good. And Andre Logan takes it away, and he's fouled by Jeff Owens. You can see the frustration in Owens' face, and I think Penn knows it's now or never. They need to score. But great heart, great position, great determination underneath. You see Alma Colley in there. There's one attempt for the tip for Owens. He gets another attempt for the tip. And then the foul. So the Tigers with their largest lead at nine will try to stretch it again with 9-10 to go. Knoxman on O'Kali's turn with the basketball. Walton looking for the same play, but this time they cut Logan off. Chapman for three. That's good. You're just about at mail it in time, Ed. This game has shifted big time. Quakers clearly on the ropes now as Owens has the basketball. Knocked away. Ball comes back to Plummer. It's a huge possession for Pennsylvania. They lose the basketball out of bounds. Princeton ball. Defensively, the Tigers continue to anticipate the passes and knock down the passing lanes. The last time Princeton won the Ivy League outright was 1998 as we watch this again. Great job to anticipate the pass by Walton. They get a break as it went off Owen's hand. Pennsylvania, when they won the title in 99, they had to beat the Tigers and Javin to do it on the last day of the regular season. They did it by 25 points. Of course, they went on to win it next year, the next year as well. Last year, the year 2000, we get a foul inside. This might be against Jeff Owens, and if it is, are well, they going to call it Lamar Plummer? He picks up his second. Jeff Owens already with two personal fouls. That's a frustration foul. They try and screen in the low post. Plummer trying to fight over the screen. That is the seventh team foul, so the Tigers will shoot the rest of the way. Elmo Colley to the free throw line for a one and one. An 83% shooter. He's one for two tonight. And he rolls the first one home. Those fans dressed in their orange are, again, poised to, almost like a champagne bottle ready to pop. They're waiting for the celebration, but still 8-14 to play. 
Malo Kali hits his second, and the Princeton Tigers lead by 14. Princeton's been on a heck of a run. It's mainly because Penn can't get any kind of offense going. Archibald's turn. Driving a whistle and a foul before the shot. And let's see how this will go against. They'll go against the Tigers and they'll catch Andre Logan. But one other thing to think about, the, if the Quakers had beaten Brown as we get the replay this weekend, this would be a winner take all tonight. You see Logan getting his hands all over Owens underneath, just fighting for inside position. Plummer driving in the paint, taken away by Kyle Wente. The Tigers have sniffed out nearly every pass by the Quakers in this second half. That is the 10th steal in the game for Princeton. Tigers on a 20 to 11 run here in the second half as they lead by 14. Wente looking down low, nobody there. Back up top to Chapman who thought about three but will get it to Alno Kali. Eight seconds on the shot clock for the Tigers. Ahmed back out to Chapman, five on the clock. Nice dribbling by CJ, forces it up. Almost got it in, but it was no good. Nate Walton fights for the rebound, but the Quakers will take over as we get a timeout on the floor. 7.20 to go in the second half, and the defending Ivy League champs are on the ropes. The Princeton Tigers lead it by 14. Princeton doing a great job running the momentum thus far. Defensively, though, Ed, stealing the ball, coming down good offensive sets. Been an exciting season of Princeton sports here on RCM. We've seen the men's basketball team, the hockey team as well. They'll be going up to Cornell this weekend for the ECAC playoffs. It's both the, all the winter seasons begin to unwind. And this portion of Princeton University basketball is sponsored by IceHockeyForKids.com. Go to www.IceHockeyForKids.com and order the Ice Hockey for Kids video. Learn the fundamentals of ice hockey, see how ice is made and kept frozen. Meet Richard Zamboni and see the famous Zamboni ice resurfacer in action. That's www.IceHockeyForKids.com. That is a great birthday present, Ed. Yeah. I don't know, that's a great present for mom or dad even, let alone the kids. When's your birthday, Ted? Oh, it's coming up in July, Ed. I'd like to go on the ride there with the Zamboni. I will certainly keep that in mind as we watch the Tigers going to work again. Now all these classic plays again. You see Walton here, dishes off. They get the three-pointer look now. And they drain it. But in Princeton, just when they need the big baskets to be able to get it, here's the same play again, different angle. You see Chapman almost from NBA range here. Drains the three. That's what C.J. Chapman, when he's on fire, he'll do. You see that quick catch and release, a lot like Brian Earl used to do, is C.J. bumping his fist coming back down the court. But he's a shooter who can just get into a rhythm where he's a lot better when he just catches and shoots. As a team this season, they're 35% from the three-point line. Tonight at 6 for 11, that's 55%. That'll win you some games. Reminder, if the Tigers do win tonight, we hope to talk to some of the victorious Tigers. However, <laughs> we'll see what happens if Princeton does win. As we mentioned, it's going to be a little more hectic on the court than we're used to seeing, or at least we believe so. We'll be fighting for our own inside position once that point starts. <laughs> well, if you're Penn here, Ed, this is your game right now. You need to start scoring, and you have to score now. Well, they need a run, certainly, and Tigers have done a nice job getting some traffic in front of Klatsky, who's been the hot shooter, not really giving him too many good looks here in the second half. Jeff Owens has to step it up right here. Owens well, will get it back out to Klatsky. Part of the problem, as Tad mentioned, is the Quakers are having so much trouble getting the ball to Owens down low, largely because of Nate Walt. Now Dan Solomito has checked into the game for the first time, gets it inside, and a foul called. I think this might go against Nate Walton. That would be Nate's third. And again, he's just fighting for position. Seeing the left side there. Boy, Owens almost bought that foul by leaning in. And a little grab with that right arm you saw by Nate Walton. So Nate picks up his third. John Thompson going to stick with him here with 6.59 to go in the second half. This may not be such a bad thing. That's the 17th foul, and Owens goes for a one-on-one. -on -one. We mentioned his struggles at the line. This time he gets the roll. One for three tonight. As we mentioned, Jeff Owens has been a terror against the Tigers in recent years, but just three points tonight. Misses his second free throw, and Andre Logan gets the rebound. 
He's got an odd free throw shot, and it goes up. It looks pretty decent, but he always hits the rim hard for some reason. Almost seems like he changes it each time when he comes down there, and that's what happens when you struggle for the free throw line. Tigers in no hurry now, even though there's 6.42 to go. They have the 13-point lead. Now Walton working inside. Good spin move, he lays it home. That's just an excellent move of using your body, spinning. Nice layup by Walton. And a steal by Nate Walton. He's doing it all tonight as he gets the ball to C.J. Chapman. If you haven't seen Nate Walton yet this year and you just look at the box scores, you see why tonight he is the Tigers' most valuable player. That was his fifth steal of the evening. Now Ahmed El Okali, open for three, got it! Well, Ed, I think it's time to pop the champagne. Timeout taken as Jadwin erupts. Listen to the crowd. Fifty-six thirty-eight, Princeton leads. And the Tigers apparently are going to take the crown away from the Quakers. They are doing everything right today. The game plan has worked on all cylinders. The rebounding game was there. The shooting game is there. And defensively, Ed, they have played a superior game defensively. Here you see Walton again. Watch this spin move. He's playing against Owens, who's a very good defensive player. Fakes inside to the left, comes in. Easy layup on the spin. That's just a great athletic effort by Walt. Again, you think back at the beginning of the year. Bill Carmody, the head coach, leaves for Northwestern. John Scott, the assistant coach, leaves to be the head coach at Air Force. Chris Young signs a baseball contract. He's gone. Ray Robbins takes a year off. Chris Krug takes a year off. Spencer Gloger transfers to UCLA. As we get the three-point shot up and no good, the rebound to Wente. Gloger transfers to UCLA. And you start the season with Nate Walton and Ahmed El Okali both hurt. And here are the Tigers with the turnover there, but just 534 away from the title. And that's really the first bad offensive play they've made in the second half. Now the Tigers will get set to go to work defensively. The crowd wants Stanford, Ed. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. You might get it. <laughs> We'll talk about that in a moment as Anikwe hits the short jumper and takes a look at the Tiger crowd. Anikwe now with nine points. He does have a sweet jump shot when he gets a good look at the hoop. Now back up ahead to C.J. Chapman as he takes it across the timeline for the Tigers. Now the thing Penn events is going to have to do is foul. This Prince is such a good foul shooting team. That's what makes coming back so tough. And that's not something the Tigers have been in recent years. But again, free throws tonight have been the difference. At least during the season for the Tigers, I should say, is now Ono Kali will kick it out with 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Logan, five on the clock. Elno Kali for three again, knocks it down. Everybody hitting for the Tigers tonight as Ono Kali now has 14. And if they put a hook shot in from half court, I think it would go in at this rate. And inside, basket good and a foul. Boy, did Pennsylvania need that. Nate Walton picks up his fourth personal foul, and the Quakers. Not going to go down without a fight here at the end as we watch Anikwe. Anikwe again, very aggressive with the hoop. But that's a tough layup with his left hand, turns his body and gets the foul. And Nate Walton will go out with four personal fouls. He'll probably come back in in a couple of minutes. As you see he and John Thompson talking things over. He's been the key defensively, Ed. He's been the man. Anikwe goes for point number 12. With Jasmine Jim shaking, he knocks it down. What's funny about it is the floor shakes as we're actually off the ground level. It shakes the whole backboard and rim was shaking as that shot went off. Incidentally, free throw percentage in the Ivy League. Princeton first, Pennsylvania last. That's been a big reason why the Tigers have been successful. There's the double team and a reach-in foul called against Schiffner. And we get another whistle. Let's see. Now there's some discussion. Let's watch it again. Say no foul in this for some reason. 
Actually, oh, someone called timeout beforehand. And you know what? Actually, I, and they would have called the foul anyway, but actually I thought that was a pretty good strip by Shipner as we get a timeout taken with 4.28 to go. And uh, Tad, if this is the end of the run for the Quakers, let's tip our hat to Pennsylvania. We talked about how these runs go back and forth. But two years ago, the Quakers, they came down here, had to literally take the title away from Princeton. They did so. Last year, it was Pennsylvania's year all year. They won here midseason to stretch their lead to two. They went unbeaten in the Ivy League. And I know people take for granted when Princeton and Penn go on these runs when they go 14-0 in the league. But I don't care what league you're in. That's an amazing accomplishment. But they've done it year in, year out. And again, there were four teams that had a shot at a week ago. And these two teams, again, come to the top. I think that's even more of a tribute to the programs, considering this was the year where both could be had, and here we are, just Princeton and Penn in the final game. And I, it's just been too much defense for Princeton thus far. Their defense has been superior from the steal standpoint, from denying the ball in the low post, and it's frustrated Penn in this game. So the Tigers up 59 to 43 with 420 to go in the second half as they would look for their first trip to the NCAA since 1998. That year the Tigers were actually a number five seed, defeated UNLV in the first round before losing to a Michigan State team that was just starting to build an eventual national champion. Some guy by the name of Mateen Cleaves oh. ruined the Tigers' day that day. Understandable. Cleaves only a sophomore in that game. Now Andre Logan kicking one back outside to Elno Kali. Ahmed swings one back out to Nate Walton. Good job by the Tigers to spread the floor. Went he down the paint, can't get the layup to fall. Nate Walton, who, do, who else gets another rebound? Great job by the senior. A lot of players would have gone back up. He said the most important thing is the clock. Let's kick it out and let's run this clock down. He's not going to get it, but Nate Walton is, is at a near quadruple double tonight. He's not going to get it up in the steal department, the assist department, but Show you the balance he's had tonight. Wenty, short jumper is good. Terrific game plan for Princeton tonight, Ed. They are just working Pennsylvania defensively up and down the floor. Pennsylvania doesn't know if they're coming or going. And Ikway, short jumper is no good. Fight for the rebound. Do we have a foul called inside against Chubb? Let's see. Look like over the back. And it is against Chubb as we watch it again. You see 15 jump from the left side of your screen. He's going to come from behind. That's what's going to draw the foul. Good inside position there by Wenny. He was the one that was fouled. Well, the Pennsylvania fans, the small section of the top of Javon Jim are quiet, and the Tiger fans are living it up right now with 3.35 to go. Almost time to print up the NCAA tournament tickets for Princeton. Wente knocks down his first free throw. Kyle Wente, another solid game with 10 points tonight. Wente on the year, just a 67% free throw shooter. Misses his second free throw, and Anikwe has the rebound. He's turned down the baseline, runs into Nate Walton, pull it back outside, Schiffner for three, that's too strong. Rebound batted out like a volleyball, Plummer tries to save it, it's Princeton ball. Great hustling effort again by Princeton to get the tap out as we get the timeout on the floor. Timeout taken, 3.16 to go in the second half, Princeton on top of Pennsylvania, 62-43. to Oh, N-C-A-A, -A. I can a, spell. With Next. an exclamation point. I think it's official, Ed. And we'll be in another 316. And, well, you have to give the Tigers credit, too, because they did it the hard way. They swept the defending champs this year if they do go on to win tonight. And the two years ago, the Quakers did the same thing. They smashed Princeton here by 25. Tonight, the Tigers, needing to win to clinch, return the favor. And a very impressive team effort at all phases of the game. It went extremely well tonight for Princeton. Incidentally, uh, amongst the NCAA tournament sites, a lot of people think the Tigers would go east. The two sites in the east regions are Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and the other one, Uniondale, Long Island. That obviously would be quite convenient from a fan's perspective. Uh, 
couple other tournament sites in the Midwest, uh, in Memphis, New Orleans, a couple of sites out west. How about this for a diverse place, uh, places to go? San Diego and Boise, Idaho oh, are, the two, are the two western sites. I think you pray for San Diego, Ed. <laughs> well, the Tigers have been sent out west once before in a year under Pete Carrillo where they lost to Arkansas. Maybe a chance they get to San Diego to have their former coach come out and watch him play. Yeah, not too far away. Uh, he's got to go a long way up the freeway, of course, uh, as an assistant coach in Sacramento. Probably a little busy with the Kings, but depending on the schedule, we'll see. He was here just a few weeks ago. The Tigers played Dartmouth. They honored the 100th anniversary of the Tigers. Great to see so many great players. And Coach Carrill and Jeff Petrie, now the GM of the Sacramento Kings, of course, played for Pete Carrill, one of the players who were honored here. Tigers probably can expect some fouling soon from Pennsylvania. Now Nate Walton's turn, top of the key. And Andre Logan back to C.J. Chapman. Chapman hounded by Plummer. Now he's triple teamed, but finds the open man in Walton, who drives to the basket and lays it home. That's a case they went for the double team out at midcourt. Once they got it into Walton, he had a three on two and gets the easy layup. Nine points for Walton, five steals, seven assists, and seven rebounds. Tigers with their first lead of over 20 tonight. Plummer's three is short. Rebound inside, kick back outside as Schipner. Gets it to the baseline. Anigwe, pump fakes in the paint. Sloppy one-handed shot, no good, but he cleans up the glass and puts on the rebound. Well, you can see the skills that Anigwe has. Ed. He's very aggressive. He has great body control. Walton had it knocked away. It goes out of bounds. And the Quakers maintain possession now with a 64-45 lead for the Tigers. Getting set to inbound is Klatsky. Work it outside and get the return fee. Klatsky has not been able to really get too many threes up in the second half. He's 0 for 1 from oh, beyond the arc, ouch. and Anikwe charges in. And down goes Nate Walton, an offensive foul call. Walton got run over like a freight train, and Anikwe just stares at him. Walton looks like he's in pretty good position to me, Ed, and Anikwe came in there off balance. And Anikwe is saying goodbye with five fouls. And the Princeton crowd will be kind enough to serenade him to the bench. Well, Fran Duffy right now with 2.06 left and a 64-55 lead for the Tigers. I think he knows it's over. And because of the Quakers' record, despite the fact they played a tough schedule, uh, they will not be going to the NIT since they are under 500. There's a young man who just fouled out of this game, but an impressive, I am so impressed with Princeton's performance at tonight, a terrific team performance. They've been impressive all season, and it took a while for this team to gel. They lost some tough games early in the season. They had the big win against Penn, then promptly lost to Cornell and Columbia on the road. And a lot of people wondered just how good this team really was, but it was a temporary setback for the Tigers. They found a way to bounce back nicely. Tigers got to get the ball in right now, and they do as Andre Logan gets it to C.J. Chapman. Chapman just hands it back to Kyle Wente with under two minutes to go in the second half. Wente blocked inside on a good play by Schiffner, but the Tigers will keep the ball as they call a foul on Schiffner. And as you look ahead to the NCAA Z, as we see this replay again, just good four corners spread the floor action as Wente comes in and gets the foul here, and he'll go to the free throw line. As always, you hear this every year. Princeton isn't going to dazzle you, but it's a team you don't want to play in the tournament. Kyle Wente at the free throw line makes his first. The late great Jim Valvano had one of the best quotes of all time about playing the Tigers. He always said, playing Princeton is like going to the dentist. You may not like it, you know it's going to be painful, but you know you'll be better off. And that's what the high-seeded team gets that's going to face these Tigers in the opening round of the NCAAs. Wente drains his second free throw. Back to a 21-point lead for the Tigers. Looks like some seniors coming in, Ed. Terrence Rozier-Bird as Nate Walton ties it up with DeMar Plummer. Let's see if he's going to go out for Walton or one of the underclassmen. But Terrence Rozier-Bird will come in and listen to the crowd as he checks in for Nate Walton.
Well, it's going to be insane to get a player of the game, but I'd say he's going to be it. Not only offensively, Ed, I give it to him as much defensively in this game. You see two of his points there. Great performance for Nate Walton. Terrence Rozier Bird is fouled, so he'll go to the free throw line. Terrence Rozier Bird, he's one of the players you hear about. He's a senior. He doesn't get much time. Actually got some time early in the year because of some injuries, but he's the kind of guy who is a fan favorite when he comes into the game. Local product from Lakewood, New Jersey, Christian Brothers Academy, and as soon as he came in off the bench, this place erupted. So if he can score here, I think they'll really go nuts. Well, Terrence at the free throw line this year is three for six. And make it three for seven. So Terrence Rozier Bird will try and crack the scores column with a minute 45 to go. And the Tigers getting ready to celebrate. Makes his second as the crowd erupts. Well, they honored him and the rest of the seniors before the game. And now he's in the scores column. That's just some great fans, Ed. Now Schiffner back outside. Now Klatsky finally getting a three-point attempt away. It's no good. Rebound inside, short layup around the rim and good by Dwayne King who's checked into the game as Fran Dumphy has sent the rest of his players to the bench. Jeff Owens checked out of the game. His career as a Pennsylvania Quaker will end as the ball is knocked out of bounds and the ball will belong to the Quakers. Just a minute 22 to go. So the Quakers two-year run will end as Terrence Rozierberg gets the steal for the Tigers. Defense, defense, defense. Empty loses the ball as they battle for it. Latsky can't come up with it and now a timeout called by Akbenano Kali Kyle when he was about to be fouled. With a minute eight to go as the Princeton Tigers lead by 20. Well Tad as we talked about the Tigers teams in recent years we mentioned their fifth seed in 98. They got an 11th seed and a 12th seed in their other two tournament appearances. Uh, although this year, because of some extra losses, I think the Tigers will be about a 15 seed. Now, some of the teams expect it to be about the two seed, depending what happens in tournament action. A lot of people think a team like North Carolina would be a number two seed. How about this for an intriguing possibility? Another team they're talking about as a number two seed, I don't know if they'd pull the rematch, is UCLA. Oh, that would be amazing if you could bring that game back again. And I, <laughs> if UCLA hears anything of a hint of Princeton, that's the last thing they want to hear. It's a great story. Nate Walton was a high school student being recruited by Princeton, was at the UCLA game. He was so excited, he called his dad after the game. The only problem is his dad was sitting in a room full of UCLA fellow alum. They weren't as happy as Nate oh. was to call in that result. There you go. The fans have started the party as well. Had another banner. Of course, the selection show will come up on Sunday. And a lot of people wonder, they say, hey, do the players really know or those fake reactions? Just like everybody else, they know when the networks reveal the bracket. So they'll find out Sunday evening where they are going. And as you mentioned, they could be anywhere from Uniondale to Boise. The weather we've had here, throw me in San Diego, <laughs> and it's Rodman. That's not a bad option. New Orleans wouldn't be a bad choice either, at least not for the media members, I know that. <laughs> players uh, may be a little more limited to they can walk out to Bourbon Street or not. Terrence Rozier Bird. Now Pete Hexeth has come into the game for Princeton. Uh, John Thompson emptying his bench a bit more. Dan Soliomito comes in and checking out is Jeff Shifter. We'll keep an eye on him. He's going to be a great player for this Pennsylvania squad in years to come. Really came up strong down the stretch for Penn to keep them in the race. One minute to go before the Tigers can celebrate as Ivy League champions. And the crowd begins to pick it up. On the baseline is Logan. He is fouled, and he will go to the free throw line. Again, we'll try to get somebody on the post game, if possible. And yeah, hopefully, we can get a hold of Nate Walton. Well, there's certainly a lot of different heroes tonight for the Tigers, and it is a case where everybody contributed tonight. First free throw by Logan is no good. I think we might get a hold of that Mike Bechtold, who hit a lot of big shots in this game too. Everybody really. You can pick out all the stars, and now Kyle Wenny will come out as he gets the hug from John Thompson. Connor New will check into the game for the Tigers. Everybody now coming off the bench for Princeton. And if you mentioned it was a team effort. Everyone got together defensively and offensively, a team effort tonight. 
Second free throw is good. Uh, Heath Jones checks into the game. Well, the, the Tigers have been in control now for so long. It'll be interesting to see how the fans react. And, of course, we'll watch the celebration with you. Three-point attempt by King rattles home. Tigers have just about a second and a half between the shot clock and the game clock. Connor News checked into the game. We'll kick it back outside to Heskett, now to Rosier Bird. Except running one inside as the Tigers just running out the closing seconds and now a timeout taken. Timeout, Tiger. timeout taken by Pete Hexett. That quick story about him, uh, I think the Tigers were in good shape Saturday in warm-ups. He accidentally collided with the brown bear mascot and sent him about six feet in the air. I think you had a hunch then it was going to be Princeton's night Saturday and Princeton's night tonight. Just a great team effort here tonight for this Princeton Tigers team. They've done a tremendous job. You could have one of a dozen players on tonight here. I, but the, the, the leader to the meet tonight, Ed, Walton was the key, and I say that from a defensive standpoint as much as anything else. Well, there's a nice maneuver. Well, it's easy to spell it out now. <laughs> the fans are doing a good job of that tonight. Inside, Connor New lost the basketball. Just 13 seconds left, however. Tigers get it back. Here they come on the steal. Connor New fires the jumper. That's way off, but it doesn't matter. Just five seconds remaining as the final seconds tick off here in Jadwin Gym. And the Princeton Tigers are headed back to the big dance. Right, there you see it, the crowd here at Jadwin going nuts. Ivy League champs 2001 for Princeton. It's just a matter of now, you know you're in the tournament. It's a matter of test, who test, test, do test, you test, play. Test, test, test. And we're gonna bring you one of the Tigers in a couple seconds after they get done <laughs> celebrating with the crowd. You see okay. most of the student body is out on the floor right now celebrating. A 68-52 final score for Princeton as they come away with the Ivy title. Ed has made his way out on the floor. He's attempting to grab one of the Tigers for us. We'll give you some interviews. See some of the players there in an outstanding performance again tonight. Walton, an outstanding game. Nakali played great. I mean, everyone who got in this game. On the bench, is a, off the bench, on the bench, starter, substitute. And there's one happy man there, John Thompson. First year head coach, wins the Ivy, and I think that face shows it all. As he is thrilled to death to take this one. As Princeton has won it 68 to 52. And they will have qualified for the NCAA tournament again. We're taking a stab saying it looks like they'll be about a 15 seed which means you're going to take on a number two seed, which puts you in the bracket of possibly a North Carolina. But again, all that to be determined this weekend. Coach Thompson with his 16th win. He's now 16 and 10, and this is one he's going to remember for a long time. You see him, he has the, the game ball in his hand. Crowd did a great job tonight as well, and again, a total team, team effort, offensively and defensively. Both teams just did a tremendous job in this one, but I think Princeton Ed, just everything went right for them tonight. Well, they have dethroned the champions, as you see Nate Walton celebrating, and hey, if you're gonna win the Ivy League championship, that is certainly the way to do it. So the Princeton Tigers win it by a score of 68 to 52. And they are Ivy League champions for the first time in three years. Where they go in the NCAAs, we'll find out 